gone. gone. I'm gone. That's right. That's right. I'm gone. That's, That's where it came from. Yeah. We had to play the proper theme it. music. Yeah, bring me in. We had to bring them in right. Bring me in. Every Bring great champion in. got their theme song. That's Come right. on, the anthem. Me and me. This is a great champion we have right here. That's awesome. We got a supreme change agent in front of us, citizens. <laughs> we got a vanguard in front of us, citizens. That's awesome. We got a natural born <laughs> leader in front of us, citizens. Woo! We got a survivor in front of us, citizens. Come, Come on, man. Come on, preacher. Come on. We got a father in front of us, Come citizens. On, yep. We got a visionary in front of us, citizens. Let it be known. We got the one and only iconic. Yep. Tyler Perry is back. Tyler Perry, baby. TP in the building. Come on, man. Good morning. Thanks Good morning. for having me. I heard Steve Harvey. Who is somebody I follow and love, who I've been inspired by my entire career, Steve Harvey, the way he's transcended comedy and becoming the entertainment mogul that he has, how he does outreach for youth. I heard Steve Harvey talk about some advice that this man gave him. Mm, wow. That I was like, damn, that was some good ass advice. You, you needed it? I need his advice. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Steve Pump, something happened on the podcast. Steve Harvey wanted to comment and he said Tyler Perry called him and said, what you doing? Yeah. And Harvey, Steve Harvey said, I'm about to go on CNN with Anderson Cooper and confront this. And he said, Tyler Perry said, well, what was said was on the podcast. Once you say it, it becomes a press conference. Oh. Yeah. yeah. You remember that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He got it, too. Yeah. It. Yeah. And stayed quiet and all went away. And it all yeah, went away. All went away. All How went did away. you learn that? What moment did you shit, learn that in? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> you got time to play. It's, it's the hard way because you know what I learned is that, you know, when you have a microphone, like you've been given a platform, your microphone, your voice is much louder than somebody else. So if there's somebody out saying things, or, or crazy stuff, what you have to do is focus on what you ha what your vision is and what you have to do and stay there. You don't come down from where you are to go address something mm. that's that won't affect you. Yeah. Right. So yeah. that's that's what I was trying to get him to learn. I think it was. Louis Farrakhan, who said, "If a, it, it, I'm probably going to get this wrong, but if a dog howls at a moon, nobody pays attention. But if the moon howls back at the dog, everybody's like, whoa, oh, wow. what did that dog do? Yeah, mm. yeah. So the learn honorable that. Learn that. Minister Louis Farrakhan. Yeah, I love when you quote him, man. I sit and watch his quotes all day. Smart man. Very smart, smart man. brilliant man. Yeah. Have you ever done anything with Louis Farrakhan? We, no, we haven't. We haven't. We met a couple of times, but no, we haven't done anything. He needs a story. He needs his biopic. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It needs to be interesting to see. Be interesting. To we'll see. be interesting. Tyler Perry is here, man. Get this man a big Woo! round of applause. The producer, writer, director of the Jazz Man's Blues was premiering on Netflix this Friday. This was his first ever written screenplay, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In 1995. Years 27 years ago, man. My yeah. God. Yeah, we had all the time to do it. Wow. wow. Yeah. And well, you because I remember we talked about this years ago how you were living in the car or yeah. at one point. Did you write it in the car? Or? No, no, no. I had a I had a place at the time. <laughs> I, I I snuck into the Alliance Theater down in uh, Atlanta when people would come out to smoke and go back in during intermission. That's mm -hmm. when I would go go in and see these plays. And uh, it was August Wilson. I think the show was two trains running. I got a chance to meet him afterwards, and oh. I told him, you know, I was doing this show called I Know I've Been Changed. It wasn't doing well, and people were giving me a bunch of shit because you know it's Chitlin Circuit. And he said, man, don't let that bother you. I have respect for all of that, and go and go and write what's in your heart too so i went and i wrote jazz man on my computer that had been in and out of the pawn shop 10 20 different times <laughs> and um wow. and wrote it that started it that night and and 27 years later here it is here it is tyler 27 years we yeah. were talking about strength courage and wisdom in dre's mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Song. song yeah man that was our uh theme song for good news thursday yeah. i'm wondering though um if this was your first play playwright that you've written how much of it is about or how much of you are, is actually in it there's a lot of me that's in it man i i, I um you know when, when i write characters show up in my head i don't sit down and say okay here's my outline here's one right they just show up so i started writing this guy shows up says his name is bayou he starts telling me a story so i'm just writing 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 then the story all unfolds but a lot of it subconsciously is is things that i've dealt with like he his father didn't like him because he was darker skin well was, i didn't realize it at the time it was the same way with my father my sister was lighter skin when hazel eyes she was the adored one and me and my other sister we're brown so the colorism was alive growing up for me uh -huh. and that showed up in the film so there's all those kind of moments that showed up from personal experience wow is yeah. it also therapeutic 
like for your family? Like, does anyone recognize themselves in your work? Them niggas don't recognize. You. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Them niggas don't recognize. You. No, no, no. I think uh, I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm gonna try to give you an intelligent answer. But, uh, he still got that honestly, Meek Mill in him right there. Honestly, yeah, so y'all don't started. turn around. Don't turn don't around. Don't, don't turn, turn around. around you fuck around, 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 around the <laughs> They gonna remember me. They gonna remember me. Yeah, but no, yeah, you got that funny. But no, that's uh, it, it, I don't know if when they see it, they're able to make the connection. But yeah, I mm. do. I do. We've been having, um, and welcome again, Tyler. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Good to see you. Oh, good to see you as well. We've been having so many full circle moments mm. this week for whatever reason. Um, our engineer here and producer, he started out as an intern. Yep. Mm. And on Monday, he became a full time producer here there at the show. There and, you go. And, and his name is Torch. His Torch. name is Torch. And bought back every single paper that he ever had from his internship to show Swing and I. It was incredible. That's awesome, man. Yeah. That's I, awesome. I read. You let that end? You letting it in, right? Yeah. Okay, let it in, let man. It let it in. in. Come on, yeah. man. Let and it that's in. that's what I wanted to yeah. ask you about because I read in People magazine that you said this was your first right and you can't wait for people that said no to see this. Yeah. I'm reading about how you let Prince Harry and Meghan Markle stay in your home. Imagine being homeless and now you have a mansion to offer to royalty. Like yeah. these full circle moments. Yeah. Do you see that as confirmation from God and how do you let that in? Oh, listen, 100%. I, I look at my entire life and everything that's happening and I go, at some point, I, I, I stopped dreaming and God's dreams were much bigger than mine. Mm -hmm. And I found myself at a place mm -hmm. where everything that I had dreamed had come true. So now the things that are happening are far beyond anything I could have imagined. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I never knew I would know, know a prince and a princess. That yeah, wasn't right. even what that was about. Was that what I was reaching out to her for was because they were giving her hell. Right. And a lot of it was because she was a black woman. Yeah, and I flat out, no denying it, I, I completely knew that and I wanted to reach out and let her know that there was somebody there for her. Mm -hmm. And I sent her a, a note and not expecting anything to come of it. And and she said, oh, thank you so much. And and um, that was it. And a couple of years later, we started talking and she was able to talk. And, she, and the only reason I'm, I'm sharing this is because she shared it first. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. And she, she we were able to talk and, and, and she was telling me some of the things that were going on. And I'm just so proud of where they are now because I'm going to tell you something. Those two people love each other. Mm. I'm, I, let me, I don't care what, Anybody says I'm seeing it up close, and you can't fool me. Yeah, I got the Holy Ghost. Okay. You can't fool me. <laughs> I, I know what's real. They really genuinely love each other. So I'm just so happy to see where they are now. But no, I never imagined this far in my life. Mm -hmm. I had big dreams, but then there comes a moment where it's much bigger than anything you could imagine. That that's amazing, blessings. man. Tyler yeah, Perry, man. That's amazing, bro. Yeah. Everything you, I'm, I'm a big, I'm a huge fan. Yeah, I'm a huge fan. Can I tell you why it took so long to make? Why? Um, I had to solidify myself because I knew as a black person in Hollywood, I wouldn't get a, uh, if this didn't work, I wouldn't get another chance. Mm -hmm. I, I, some of my white counterparts, I've seen them get chance after chance after chance, even if their movies didn't work well, even though period piece, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of white people don't get chances to get in Hollywood. I'm not saying that everybody does, but as a black person, my my window to, to make mistakes was much smaller. So I had to do what I knew worked. I had to do Medea. I had to do Why Did I Get Married? Yeah. I had to do things yeah. my audience wanted. Yeah. And they man, they solidified me. They built me up. They helped me build the studio. They made me so solid in, in the business that now I can take the chance and do a jazz man and some of the stories I've always wanted to do. So it's it's, incredible. it had to be strategic. Right, man, yeah. congratulations Thank to you, you, man. Thank you. This is a wonderful love story. Like it could go down as one of, you know, the best. Uh, there are. I, well, did any love stories inspire you in the past? You know, I I, I wouldn't say a love story inspired okay. me, but just yeah, listening to these characters talk and seeing their love for each other and how no matter what tried to separate them, they stayed together. They stayed like together. It, oh. Even time and space. I mean, it all, they always, always came back together. And you're growing up, you've got a woman that's passing for white, you got a young black man who they fall in love, and she didn't know she was going to end up passing for white. Her mother forced her into passing for white, and they fall in love, and nothing can separate that love. So when y'all see it, it's, it's, it's really going to blow your mind. I can't wait for people to see it. <laughs> Tyler Perry is here. I promise the citizens they'll get a few questions. The first one is a young man who just started his own film company. Mm. Mm. His name is Orlando. He's in Illinois. He's been holding for 45 minutes to ask you this question. All right, let's Orlando, you there? Oh! Uh, yeah, it. yeah, I'm, I'm here. How y'all doing? Man, I was gonna say after all that, minutes, yeah. <laughs> Did you hang up? Go ahead, meet Mr. Tyler Perry, Orlando. First of all, Tyler Perry, I want to say it, it's an honor talking to you. I'm a big fan of yours. Uh, 
my girlfriend a big fan of yours. We always watch your movies and TV shows. Uh, I do got a few questions because I always wanted to work for you. I've been to Atlanta, walked them past your studios a few times, but I was always hesitant about coming up up to the gate and trying to see how to work for you and everything. But mm. I just got a few questions, and uh, hopefully you can give me lead me down the right path. My first question is, how many no's you had to hear before you, before you heard, yes, we can do it? Uh, listen, no's were constant. But as I said before, I'll tell you this, man. All you need is one yes from God, and none of them no's will matter. There you That's go. Right. I got one yes, and I'm still riding on that one yes. And and I don't care how many doors slam, because what I found about doors closing and all this other stuff, not a lot of times that's not a bad thing because what is what happened in my yep. life is as these doors were closing i was forced to go in another direction i had to go right i had to go left and it's like being in a maze mm. and you run into a brick wall it's like no I, I was supposed to go this way no 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 there's another way out you just have to find it and keep pushing and pressing so so all you need is that one yes mm -hmm. one yes orlando i'm gonna let you get one more real quick go ahead mm. okay and then my next question is I want to give you, I want to pitch you my short narrative film that we had to do for my class at Forest Hill University. My pitch got voted best pitch out, I mean, well, best pitch, best short film narrative after class. So they want me to record it, and it'll be a 30 minute short film, but my pitch is real quick. Uh, I just wanted to have time uh, you, to hear. I you, get you can't do your pitch on the radio. Let me tell you something about, about pitches. We have a way to set that up, and it's on it's on the website at Tyler Perry Studios. You'll see how we audition, how we talk to people, how people get jobs. When we have jobs and opening, we post them there. But let me tell you something about a public pitch like this to me. Um, I've been sued several times by people who said, oh, oh, he took my idea, he stole my idea. So I don't receive pitches. There's a process it has to go through. It has to be registered. It has to go through agents so that it can get directly to me because I've never stolen anything from anybody in my life, especially somebody's idea. So when you're pitching like this, it has to be the right way to anyone, not yeah. just me, to anyone, to protect you and to protect that person. Word. And I'm sure it's probably very, very good. And one day I'll get yeah. a chance to see it, but it's got, you've got to go through the proper channel. Go to his website, Orlando. You're a citizen, brother. You got it off, man. I'm proud of you, man. Good questions, too, all right? All right? Okay. Appreciate y'all, man. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Don't stop, Orlando. Michael's on the line from Illinois. Real quick question. Go ahead, Mike. Go. Hey, Mike. Hey, hey, everybody. Uh, Tyler, what's the main thing you're looking for actors when you uh, get them a role in this? Yeah, you know, I'm I'm not always looking for the the person who has the most talent. I'm looking for the person who has the most uh, idea of what it takes to get the work done and the most tenacity to get it done. Like a, a talent for me is important, but if you find somebody who has not, who's there's somebody who has a lot more talent, but that person has just enough, but they have the right attitude, spirit, and 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 drive to get it done, then they usually are somebody I'm going to lean towards. Wow, like, that's why. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's yeah, right. yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. Oh, okay, cool. Like, like, write me in. Write yeah, me yeah, in, coach. Write, write me in, coach. <laughs> <laughs> Like if you look at Jazz Man, these are all new faces, and it what it does, what it did was, it, first of all, when you're watching it, it takes you out of having to get over the a star that you recognize being in the movie. But in my entire career, I've always been somebody who's tried to break new talent. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, from Idris Elba to in 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 uh, Daddy's Little Girls, his first movie to that's true, to, yeah, oh, wow. to Viola Davis being in in, in Medea Goes to Jail. Come I mean, on. I remember being on set with her. She did the scene. I was just like, who? Are, I walked up to said, who are you? Like you knew you, then. I, I'm like, who are you? I, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. So having the opportunity to work with all these people and break all these new faces is is, is really awesome. So it's always about the talent. What is it like though? Because I was going to ask you that that normally you have you have reoccurring actors that appear in your in your pieces of work, but yeah. this, like you said, you have new artists. So how does um how does that work for you establishing new relationships with the new actors? You know, honestly, I went to a bunch of up and coming young black talent. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and you know, they read the scripts like, yeah, we want to do it, we want to do it. But then they were like, uh, I don't know, as if they thought I was going to have Medea in the movie somewhere, you know, not uh -huh. understanding this is a period piece, right? So so that didn't work out. And in the middle of that, I, I had to go back to remembering what my purpose is in this business is to launch new talent, new voices, new faces. So it, I, I started looking for, but I didn't want just any talent. I wanted that talent that, that had that commitment to it, like Denzel and Howard Rollins and uh, all these, Lawrence Fishburne, all these people in, in A Soldier Story. Yeah. And I found them here in New York in, on, on Broadway. And what I noticed is that one always knows another. So there's a click of that kind of talent. 
It was pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, um, we started the conversation off with some advice that you gave to Steve Harvey that just yeah. really set him straight. Is there can, is this something you could share from somebody you looked up to that gave you advice once that you utilized? Oh, all the time, man. From my Angelo, to, to, the, one of the greatest gifts I've had is that the the the, the veterans, the, you know, who came before us, they all loved what I did. From uh, me getting a message from Rosa Parks saying how much she laughed about the Medea joke, oh, and, and, wow. oh, Medea on the bus, you know, too. So they all gave me great advice. I, I'll never forget um, Sidney Poitier sitting in my living room and we were talking. Listen, I've, I, listen, I sat on a plane with Sidney Poitier and Cicely Tyson flying to Africa. <laughs> Come what? on. I kid you not. That's I, I invited them to fly with me, so I sat on the oh floor literally for hours listening to them talk. So I've got, one day I'm going to write a book about all this stuff. I wish I had one thing in particular I can say, but mm-hmm. from Oprah to them, they've all said some incredible things. Wow, what did they talk about? Because I'm sure they were swapping old school secrets and moments, right? Oh. And, and Sidney was just so such class, man. Just, yeah. I mean, the, he was just a man that was regal and upright, and you couldn't get him to come off of his his kingship. You know, he knew who he was. It was so inspiring for me to see. But they talked about the business. They talked about being black in the business. And mm-hmm. Cicely said this that 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 really laid, landed with me. She said as she looks at young people now, she said, "We fought for so much. We don't think we left them enough to fight for." which blew my mind. I was like, wow. They overcame so much wow. that you've got a, a group of young people that are fighting for a lot of things, mm. but we should have left them more to fight for. It's like, wow. And I think about that when I think about jazz, man. I've got, like, somebody sent a, a note to me saying, do, why do we keep having to have these black stories that are mm-hmm. oppressive and all this other stuff? Why do we have to, why can't we just talk about good, beautiful black things, which, is, which we can, mm-hmm. but you cannot forget where we came from or the debt the people paid so you can have those freedoms. Get that a round yeah. of applause. Yeah. I say that all yeah. the time. Yeah, Because yeah. yeah. folks don't want to see movies that, that, that they're dealing with slavery and all these yeah. different things. And I'm like, yo, I like to see it because I don't want us to... You look at... Um, J- Jewish folks, so well, they they want you to remember the Holocaust. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and I and I know I know why we want to get removed from it because a lot of us are still in the struggle, and I get it. Yeah, but but I don't want much because my son, when he describes the kids he goes to school with, he's never said the black girl, the in, the Indian girl, the Asian girl, never. Seven years old, uh-huh. he's always talking about oh her with the blonde hair, her with the, him with the him with the red hair. Mm-hmm. You know, he he doesn't see it the way that we did growing up. But I don't ever want him to be in a position growing up in this in the seat that he. In and that he misses what we came through. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. He, he he is going to be on the forefront of the understanding of what it means to be black in America and all that his ancestors and even me had to endure just so he could go to a private school. That's you know what right. I mean? yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Tyler Perry, I want to thank you, brother. Every time you come here, man, I I woke up this morning feeling good because I knew you were going to be here. I appreciate it. <laughs> absolutely. That. A jazz man's blues premiering on Netflix this Friday. Who's your number one rapper right now in the game? Who you like most? I ain't saying they're the best, but who who who's inspiring? Who you who you feeling the most now? Kendrick, man. Kendrick Lamar. Mm. Kendrick, Ken, Mr. Mr. Morel. Yeah. Yep. Ooh, Ooh, man. And and for him to drop my name in it, I'm like, wait a minute, hold on a second. <laughs> Come on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> hold on. But I was just like, when I heard it, I was like, wait, wait, what's happening here? But the, the, he's he's brilliant on a level that I think Tupac was, mm-hmm. and he's also s- spitting some truth that a lot of young folks need to hear. Mm-hmm. I mean, Kendrick is on a whole nother thing right now. I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm blown away by it. Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick I Lamar. I like it, man. Yeah. Once again, man, we agree. Tyler Perry. <laughs> hey. Give it up for Tyler Perry. Hey. Tyler, thank you for coming through, Torch. man. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. <laughs> congratulations. All right, All right, Torch. You said congratulations. Congratulations, man. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Congratulations. All right, man. All right. We got That's the big. mix coming up, but check this out real quick. <laughs> <laughs>